some numbers to this in order to better understand what's going on. I have an equation for a demand curve here and an equation for a supply curve. And say that quantity demanded is equal to 48 minus 6 times the price, and quantity supplied is equal to negative 12 plus 4 times the price. Graphically, then, we can say here that our quantity access, inter access intercept is 48, and our price axis intercept is 7. And then for our supply curve, our intercept over here is where quantity supplied is equal to 0. So if negative 12 plus 4p equals 0, then price is equal to 3. Now the first question that we can ask ourselves is, before we put this price ceiling in place, what is the equilibrium price and quantity? So to do that, we just say, well, where is the point where quantity demanded and quantity supplied are the same, which means that 48 minus 6p has got to equal negative 12 plus 4p. Doing a little bit of algebra here, we see if we put all the p's on one side and all the constants on the other side, 10p equals 60, or our equal equilibrium price is equal to 6. So we can put that over here, right there. If we plug our price back into the equation for either demand or supply, we get that our equilibrium quantity is 12, so we can put that guy here. Now we want to say, well, what happens if we put a price ceiling in place? And in this example, we'll just take a price ceiling at p equals 4. So our price ceiling here is going to be at 4. Well, we notice that at a price of 4, our quantity supplied is equal to negative 12 plus 4 times 4, which is just 4. So this guy here is going to be 4. Our quantity demanded is going to be equal to 48 minus 6 times 4, which is 24. So our quantity demanded is all the way out here at 24. And the shortage is the difference between those. In this case, quantity demanded minus quantity supplied, because demand is the bigger one. 24 minus 4, which is 20. So this amount of the shortage, quantitatively speaking, is 20. So what this means is when we put a price ceiling in place to go from an equilibrium price of 6 to a price of 4, we have four lucky people that get the item at a price of 4, not counting whatever time they spend standing in line and whatnot, like we just talked about. But then we have 20 people that want this item at a price of 4 and can't get it. So that's the trade-off that we're looking at here. There's not an easy solution where we can both have a low price and we can have everybody getting what it is that they want. There are two basic features that affect how large the shortage is that results from a particular price ceiling. One of those things is the elasticity of supply and demand. All else being equal, when you have more inelastic supply and demand, meaning steeper supply and demand, you're going to get a smaller shortage than if you have more elastic supply and demand. You'll notice here that in both cases, the price ceiling is the same distance away from the original equilibrium price, but we get a much bigger shortage when our demand and supply are more responsive to price. The other thing that matters when considering how large of a shortage we're going to get from a price ceiling is, not surprisingly, the size of the price drop. And by that I mean by how much the price decreases when we put the price ceiling in place. So here I drew two supply and demand curves that look the same, but you'll notice here when the price drop from the original equilibrium price to that with the price ceiling is only a little bit, we get a smaller shortage than we do when we end up with a bigger price drop because of the price ceiling. Technically speaking, rather than having a price ceiling, we could also have what we call a quantity ceiling, which rather than stating a maximum price the suppliers can charge, states more directly what the maximum quantity of a good allowed in the market is. These don't happen very often for two reasons. First, when you're setting a maximum quantity, that's sort of a hard thing to see. So logistically speaking, from the government's perspective, it's unclear how they would go about enforcing that. Second, it gets a little bit difficult here because at this quantity ceiling, 
And so suppliers need to get a minimum of this price here in order to be willing to sell, but consumers are willing to pay a price all the way up here. So it's not well defined what price is going to exist between these two numbers. And it really depends on the relative bargaining power and things like that between consumers and producers. For these two reasons, it's usually price floors and price ceilings that are put in place rather than trying to mess with quantity directly.